Hello friends, thanks for tuning back in to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you in this video how I make my holiday rolls. This is my second attempt at making these rolls. I found that I cannot count cups of flour and mix up things and talk at the same time and hold a phone to record. Haha. <laughs> so anyway, I have everything all measured out and ready to go. In my bowl I have my yeast and my water and I'm going to add in eggs and oil. This recipe you can use spelt flour or if you're on maintenance or sprouted wheat flour and I'm using sprouted wheat today and I have a little bit of xanthan gum in here. If you don't have xanthan gum and I, I have that in most of my baking recipes if you don't have xanthan gum and don't want to buy it because it's pricey for a bag even though that bag will last you for a super long time but let's say you only want to make these rolls one time you're not going to make them again or you're not going to make them very often or you're only going to make them once in a while and buying a bag of xanthan gum just doesn't make sense then what you can do is instead of xanthan gum you can actually put in about a tablespoon or so of tapioca flour or, if you're using sprouted wheat, you can use the vinegar that's in the recipe. I tend to not use vinegar and xanthan gum in the same recipe. So generally it's one or the other. Now what the xanthan gum does, I get this question a lot. What it does is it helps to retain moisture in with the flour so that the bread is nice and light and fluffy. The vinegar will actually help to soften the, the wheat a little bit and help it to absorb moisture, the water, and from the egg yolks and the eggs and the oil, and help retain that moisture so that the bread is fluffy. Sprouted wheat, just like regular wheat flour, is pretty coarse, and so the vinegar can help with that. I'm going to mix this all up together and I'm going to keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's getting too dry I'm going to add some more water. I have my salt and my xanthan gum right here. I'm just going to toss that in. This recipe is adapted from Martha Stewart's no knead roll recipe and is so so easy to make. I'm going to get this mixed up and then I'm going to show you how I form the rolls and put them in the pan and let them rise and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna turn that off for just a second because it's really loud. From start to finish, if you have a really strong, nice fresh yeast, you can do this in about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes from starting your mixer until eating. So you can time that accordingly for your Thanksgiving meal or your holiday dinner. And what I like to do is to make the rolls and to let them rise and be ready to bake so they're ready to go into the oven as the turkey comes out of the oven or shortly after the turkey comes out of the oven or the roast or whatever it is that I'm cooking so that the meat can rest and then the rolls can bake and then they're nice and fresh. So that's how I time it. So I'm going to finish mixing this and then I'll come back and show you what the dough looks like. Okay, you can see that the dough is mixed up now. It has cleaned the bowl, so that's a good indication that your dough is done. And even though this is a no knead recipe, I do let my stand mixer do a little bit of work and do a little bit extra kneading. Um, just, I let it go for, on a medium low speed, for maybe a minute, not for very long. If you're mixing this up by hand, you can just stir everything together, make sure that there's no flour particles and try to get it to this point where the dough is a nice cohesive ball. Um, and it's pretty, it takes a little bit of arm work, but it's not impossible to do. This dough is not super stiff, so, you could easily do this by hand if you wanted to. Um, but this is what it looks like. I'm gonna take it off the mixer. I'm gonna cover it with a damp towel. I'm gonna to put it in a warm place next to my oven and I am going to let it rise until it is just doubled. Um, with sprouted wheat, you wanna make sure that your dough doesn't quadruple in size because if there's, especially if there's a second rise involved, it just sometimes just cannot make a second rise um, as well as the first rise if you let it go too far. So um, I only want it to be about double in size, maybe a little bit bigger. And then I will come back and show you how I form the rolls 
and get them in the pan. They'll rise again and then they'll bake for about 12 to 15 minutes and then they'll be perfect and delicious, especially with vegan butter. You can get that recipe on the blog and I'll see you in a bit. All right, here we go. Here's the dough. It's risen for about 40 minutes. It only took, my kitchen's pretty warm. I got the oven on. So that's what it looks like. It's a little sticky. That's okay. And what I'm going to do with this batch, this actually makes a lot of rolls. It's six cups of flour. So if you're being completely strict with FMD, um, making things homemade, using sprouted wheat flour for phase three, this is going to make 48 rolls or you would, you would, should have 48 servings for FMD. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bake some in this pan and then I'm going to roll some into balls and freeze the balls that I'll use at Christmas time so I won't have to make so many. And I got a little too much oil in this pan. So I'll just take some of it out. Get this worked around. And then I'll show you how I roll the balls. Now I, this is how I do it for hamburger buns, for any, any kind of rolls. I just kind of take a shape and a little bit, it's about a golf ball size, and I kind of flatten it out. I want it nice and pretty on top. So I just tuck all these sides into the bottom, pinch them together, okay? And then on the top, nice pretty ball. And I'll stick it in there and do another one. You can roll it into a ball and flatten it so you got a nice pretty top. And then just gather all those edges together, pinch them real tight together, and then you've got a nice pretty top. And what I'll do is I'll fill this up. You can make these bigger. If you want to make sandwich size, you can make them uh, much bigger. You can make them smaller if you want them smaller. And this does get a little sticky. You can see it sticking to my hand. I got some here. If you wet your hand with some cold water, it will keep the dough from sticking. Or you can just use a little bit of olive oil if you want. I'll go through and complete these and I will be back and show you. All right, here we are. I got a pan full. This will be plenty for what we need for Thanksgiving. It's just me and my husband and my son. And now what I'm going to do with the rest of the dough, because I still have quite a bit left. So I'll set these off to rise over here for just a second. And I'll cover them with a damp towel, just like I did the dough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm just going to put them on this baking sheet. And then I'm going to pop this baking sheet in the freezer for a few hours. And then once they're frozen solid, I'll take them out and put them in a zip top bag. And then I will have rolls ready to rise and bake um, in no time. So what I'll do when I need them is you can take them out the night before, put them in a cold oven, just put them in a greased pan, let them sit without the oven on, just let them sit overnight. And they'll rise up, take them out, preheat your oven and stick them in and then bake them for as long as you need. These, depending on the size of the rolls, these are some, relatively small, so they'll take probably 12 to 15 minutes or so. They won't get super, super golden like you if you were using a white flour, um, but they should brown a little bit on top. And then I have my Christmas rolls ready to go. Now, if I was doing hamburger buns, I would do the same method and then I would squish this down flat. So I want a nice smooth top, but then I would pat it down flat, um, kind of like this, and kind of stretch it a little bit. And then, because the dough feels very similar to this, and then I would stick it in my English muffin ring that's been greased with olive oil, and like this, so I have a nice smooth top on my hamburger bun. That's how I make the rolls. You can make clover leaf rolls. My mom used to do that when I was little. We Every year for Thanksgiving, she would make bread, and that was the only time she made homemade bread. She bought the stand mixer. It wasn't a KitchenAid. It was Oster, and I think she still has it, and I think it still works, 
but that's when she would make bread and she would make clover leaf rolls and you take the dough and you grease a muffin tin with your oil and then you make smaller dough balls probably about the size of a large marble or so and you put three in each muffin tin and then let it rise and bake and she would do that and that was fun i got to help her roll out the dough sometimes i remember that and then when i got old enough to cook i was probably about eight years old when i was allowed to cook things on my own and I started making cakes and things in the KitchenAid or in the Oster and using the stand mixer. And I thought that that was just the greatest thing ever because you didn't have to hold the mixer, the, stand, the hand mixer. It was very efficient. The bowl turned and it was pretty awesome. If you wanted, you could put some herbs in this and make them flavored. You could add some garlic if you want. I tend to just make these plain because sometimes I'll use these for breakfast on phase three. This is my grain. And I can put some cashew butter on it. Or fry an egg and use a nice roll as my bread to dip into the yolk. These are really, really very good and they're very simple to make and you could really, I'm gonna make one big one here out of this. Um, you, could, you could really make these every week or every month and just freeze them and have them all the time and use them all the time, but they're kind of special to me so I don't tend to only make them on holidays so that, so that we can have them on the holiday. Now you'll see that I did not make 48 rolls. We're not super strict with, um, with FMD. I didn't even count how many I have. I might have, just over 24 so I could cut them in half if I wanted to be strict and only have half a roll or I could have made them smaller um, but to be honest with the with the grains you, you obviously don't want a big giant roll that's you know takes two hands to pick up but you know any any decent sized roll I think I'd, you'd be okay with with having but if you want to be strict make your 48 portions if you want to know how to divide this up into 48 portions take your dough grease your counter take your dough and roll it out into a log so that it's a nice same side, you know, shape all the way down and then cut it in half and cut each half and half and each half and half until you get to 48 pieces and then you can flatten them and roll them into a ball and then you'll, that way you'll have your even pieces. That's another way you can do it. I just tend to eyeball it and yes, I make them a little bit bigger than what they should be for a super strict FMD, but they're for holidays, so I'm not worried. Um, I have not tried this with many other flours. I have used my flour blends before they work. The gluten-free flour mix will work, um, but as far as anything else, I haven't tried. Only sp sprouted wheat, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sprouted wheat and spelt. So um, as far as any other flours, I haven't tried with this recipe yet. But I hope you give it a go. Make sure when you're done, you brush them when they come out of the oven. As soon as they come out of the oven, brush them with some olive oil or some of my uh, melted vegan butter and it makes the tops nice and shiny and soft. If you don't want to use olive oil or butter, but you still want shiny, nice crust, one tip that I've not put anywhere for anyone is take an egg white and beat it up really well with a whisk in a very large bowl. You want it nice and loose and it, until it's foamy and you can dip a brush in it and you can it's actually liquefied. And before you bake them, while they're rising, very, very gently, and you really need a pastry brush for this, you don't want to use a silicone brush because it's a little heavier but if you have a pastry brush that's actual bristles then um, very lightly brush that egg white beaten egg white over the top of every roll and then let it sit for a couple of minutes and your rolls will come out nice and shiny all righty here they are nice and risen they filled the pan they look delicious i'm going to stick them in the oven and bake them off and i'll come back and give you that final update. Here they are, brushed with olive oil, all done. I hope you give these a try. The recipe's linked below. Thanks everyone.